Let us take a moment to remember those who came before. First, there was Solomon, a vile human cleric of Varasi, in whose wake followed chaos and death. He sought great and terrible power, but learnt, as many before, the dangers of an angry mob who caught and drowned him. Next came Barrel, a young human noble, who got involved in one of the many games that nobles always play, and as many who get involved with such games, died a brutal death. Desmond the Dashing, a human thief, whose confidence was his greatest skill, but sadly common sense was his lowest, and when he challenged a camp of ruffians, it ended pretty much as you'd expect it would. The first non-human joined the roster in the form of Balrog Blacksteel, the dwarven fighter priest. During his explorations, he became the victim of a strange curse of undeath, but a purple worm made a light snack out of him. Quelnir the Cunning was next, an elven thief with a lost history, awoke on a beach. He clawed his way from nothing to being a major player in the criminal underworld and one of the few who survived dicing with death at least for now. The next challenger who challenged death was a young human wild mage named Fenric, with a flair for setting things on fire. Ironic then, that he died from a fireball from a dying wizard. Malcolm Smith, a smith turned wizard, who sought a new beginning after he incinerated his parents. He died to vicious goblins after trying to be a hero and raiding a goblin lair. The first female challenger was Verissa, a human war cleric who joined a group of bandits but died a rather unheroic death when she was bitten by an eel while diving in a lake. The second female challenger comes straight after, Clarissa, the 14-year-old wizard who left the smouldering remains of her home and family in search of adventure. Sadly, she also learnt that little girls are a goblin delicacy. Wilhelm the Magnificent, human illusionist, joined a circus, but met a messy end when trying to capture a fellow carney. Frank Kershaw, a.k.a. Cranky Fist the Brawler. He newly arrived in town and tried to establish himself as a criminal kingpin. He tried to imitate a werewolf, but sadly those pesky commoners formed a mob and hunted him down. Next is Tyrus Bellows. No relation to the sheriff. A paladin of Verasi. A stranger in a strange land, sent there to prepare the way for the coming of Varasi army, but sadly was cut down by hobgoblins due to a misunderstanding and a missing holy symbol. Christoph the human fighter was the next challenger, a scythe-wielding psychopath who believed himself to be the very embodiment of death. He tried to spread death and chaos by burning down a town, but he got cut down instead. More of a guess than a challenger, Crewbarb makes a quick appearance and discovers a secret dragon before scampering back to his proper show. Silax the Hobgoblin, cleric of Varasi, the first monstrous challenger steps forth. He was given the divine task to prepare the way for Varasi. He managed to unite an army of monsters, but they were defeated, and so he had to come up with plan B. But he encountered some spiders, who care not for gods or divine quests. They care only for food, 
which is what Silex became. Genie the Fighter Mage Cleric was the next challenger. He had a rather creepy adventure in the moors and was driven to the brink of insanity and eventually he was killed by kobolds. Lastly is of course Georg, only the second to survive. A young human wizard fresh off the boat with the twinkle of mischief in his eye. His adventures were harrowing and he was forced down a dark path. He eventually finds a baron who hired him as a court mage. As Georg's death toll rose, so did his power. But at what cost? Who is the next challenger trying his luck? How long will he last? How dark will this get? Let's find out on Dicing with Death. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Dicing with Death. Ryan, how are you doing on this fine Wednesday morning? Afternoon. Not bad. Not bad. It is technically afternoon. Yeah. Only in not Hawaii and Alaska. Fair enough. I... <laughs> It's always morning somewhere in the world. Uh, <laughs> how is Seattle instead of Western, Eastern Washington? Nice, sunny for now, but I hear that winter is coming. So, but it must be a nice relief from the blazing heat of the east. Uh, it's actually getting pretty nice out in Eastern Washington. Really, I kind of expected yeah. it to be uncomfortably warm. In the summer, it is. So right now, it's it's probably my favorite time of year to be out there and. Cool. Things are nice here. Let's let's keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> Settling into the new quarter, and and terrorizing uh, entry level physics students with uh, flying planes and pendulums. More or less, it's babysitting mostly. But do you have any fun activities for them to suffer through? I don't know. These first two weeks, they've just been rolling carts down hills, and. Actually rolling carts down hills? Literally rolling carts down hills, yes. Sounds like a great education system. Yeah, something like that. Uh, so, um... Well, you're going to be running our campaign today because we're switching I am? characters. Oh, shit. <laughs> I hope you've planned a lot in store because I'm going to be taking a very <laughs> passive character route and I'm going to need a lot of direction. You're joking, I hope. I'm joking. Ned, uh, no, I'm sorry, Eric, son of Ned, is very um, personally... Not, not Eric, son of Neil? No, no, that, that got changed. It was Eric, son of Neil for a while, but I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I changed to Eric, son of Ned. Um, he's got his own personal ambitions, but he's fairly lazy. So uh, we'll see how far he gets with them. Before we get started, why don't we thank Layla and Chris for the recap and also wish Layla a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Layla. Thank you for the amazing recap that covers two years of, oh my God, Dicing with Death history. Yeah, this is maybe episode 100, maybe episode 102. It's, well, episode 100 on YouTube, and that's all yes. that counts. And that's all that matters. So we got a little <laughs> extra special recap. I'm not sure if they're watching live, but why don't you you guys in chat wish, wish her a happy birthday? Yeah. And thank you for all the lovely uh, recaps over the past few years. So um, how do you want to start this? It's been a very long time since we started a new character. I kind of forget how we do this thing. Well, usually we roll characters on stream, but I think you went and you just like made up stats no, no, that you look, wanted to have. If you actually look gave in. Gave yourself the max money. Scroll up a little bit. You see that genie salvage? Yeah, bag? yeah. I'm just teasing. All right. Th those are the stats that I rolled. They have been rearranged. It's 16 strength, 17 dex, 13 con, 9 int, 8 will, 14 charisma, 13 perception. And two hit points. Poor guy. Yeah, that is problematic. Um, he's a human fighter. Like 5'5", five, five, 155 pounds, ambidextrous, 33 years of age, greased back, black hair, deep brown mm -hmm. eyes, short and well-muscled, wearing soldiering garb without signs or insignias. 
Carries <clears throat> six daggers, a short sword, a medium shield, wears leather armor. Um, and he's got a donkey named Wallace that carries the rest of his crap. You know, tent, water, uh, blankets, tinderbox, lanterns, oil, a chest, some locks, some candles, uh, a bunch of cloth, a shovel, rope, saddlebags, iron pot, cooking utensils, water skin. You know, the shit that donkeys carry for you. Fascinating. Um, do you want to enlighten us to a little bit of your backstory? Do you- yeah, Eric, son of Ned, was born a peasant, but when a local lord called his banners, Eric was the person from his family that was enlisted with the, or conscripted, to go fight the war. Came back a few years later, only to find his family has died in a cholera outbreak while he was gone, and their land had been repossessed. So, what's he gonna do? He doesn't want to keep killing people, he sure as hell doesn't want to go back to farming, especially if he doesn't have any land of his own. But he's got these weapons, this ar- his weapons, this armor, skills he learned abroad. So he is going to take to banditry. Um, he blew all of the money that he had coming back from soldiering pretty quickly. And uh, so he's just going to be your standard road bandit. But he's not a mean guy. He's not an asshole. He doesn't want to kill anyone. So hopefully he'll be more kind of like robbing people and then just letting them go because he just wants their money and only really killing the ones that he has to um which is inevitably i think going to get him in trouble when people you know figure out who he is but he's a lazy guy he doesn't he doesn't have a lot of ambition he's got a lot of potential but he rarely lives up to it um yeah how That's- politically minded do you think uh Eric is as it how much do you know about the the lords you fought for about the war that you fought in not much he's an armchair politician he absorbs Mm -hmm. things through osmosis you know if he hears the local lord is an asshole from one source he just kind of goes with that and believes it unless someone gives him really good evidence to the contrary he's not Mm -hmm. you know he's apt to just form opinions from whatever floats through Kind of takes people at face value, usually. Do you hold any bitterness against the powers that be over what happened? I mean, are you... I mean, it sounds like your family died of natural causes. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's that pissed over the bad. repossession of their land. Mm-hmm. Uh, and upset that he wasn't there when they died, but, you know, that's not really anyone's fault. Um, mm-hmm. So he's not upset at the, the person who called him off to war. He's kind of upset at the repossession of land, but even that can kind of be understood because, you know, everyone in the family died and they didn't know he was off at war, so... Uh, you know, life just gives you shit sometimes. It gives you lemons and you gotta make lemonade, and here's my lemonade. Give me your money now, Mr. Lord. This is what happens when you don't treat your soldiers well. Sure. And it sounds like as some preemptive role-playing, you've ditched your... You've ditched 50 GP. Yeah. Um, let's say... I think you probably lost that gambling. Gambling, uh, living it up. Probably mm-hmm. when he first came back, he like stayed at the nicest inn, had all the nicest food, yeah. bought the nicest girls, you know, bought drinks for everyone, and just kind of blew all of his money living, living large until he's like, oh my god, I've got a hundred silver left. Yeah. And so a donkey. You... Oh god, I gotta... Yeah, maybe even that money was given to you as recompense for your farm or for, mid- oh. for your military service, maybe some spoils of war. Okay, I can get behind that. Um, but I guess you went on a bit of a gambling binge with your degenerates, your de- de- degenerate friends in the city uh, up in Seagate. And I've, got a, I've got a gaming proficiency. How did I lose? Uh, I got a 14 in gaming. I, I just... 14 in gaming. The house I man, I, I they cheated. I would have thought more about... Uh, they, they must have cheated me out of the money, right? It's a corrupt gambling den. The dice were loaded, Possibly. man. The dice were loaded. A lot, of these, a lot of these guys you're associating with are less than reputable. Yeah. Well, that's where you go to get the Thieves good games. The, yeah. The, the no limits, high stakes, mm-hmm. Seagate Hold'em. Yeah. Uh, and, although I, I think sort of as a consequence of that binge, you did get a, a lead on a possible possible mark possible 
it score. I don't know what to look at. Um, the guy you were working with is sort of a low level in the, in the Thieves Guild, so you don't have a lot of details, but he heard rumor of some high value items being brought in from the coast. Um, uh -huh. um, on the, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll pick up on that day, on that, on that evening. Um, okay. when you're, you're expecting this, this shipment to come, come through the road. Um, can I get a, a map of the area? Cause I don't remember where Seagate is. Um, no. Okay. The gate's north of where you are. Okay. Um, uh, what's the terrain around me like then? Uh, it's, it's, it's like sort of rolling hills, a lot of farmland around, um, kind of, uh, wet and dreary. Okay. Um, wooded, mm -hmm. open. Um, there are the occasional trees, but mostly open, open hills, uh, and a lot of farmland. Okay. Um, Seagate is part of the north. Uh, there's a uh, village, hamlet, a village <laughs> uh, by the name of uh, Cornbrook. I think just a little ways south. So uh, you're probably staging this hit just just north, uh, not north, just north. But what was the village's name again? I want to write. Uh, Cornbrook. Cornbrook. Okay, hold on. I've got an actual binder for dicing with death. Now I'm going to make real notes. Shit, holding me, holding me to it. All right, Cornbrook with a C. Yeah, well, do, do you know how to write? You know how to write? No, Eric then is you can, illiterate. You can spell it however you damn well please. Okay. That's to the south or the east. That's that's to the that's to the south. Well, I mean, you can, it can be up to you. I'm thinking you're probably. Um, yeah. Well, okay. So there's, a, there's a shipment coming in by sea, and then they're transporting it over land north. Um, the most unguarded stretch is probably here, north of Cornbrook, which so where I think you'll stage an ambush. It's arriving in Seagate and then heading north? Uh, no. Seagate's far to the north, like many days. Okay. So it's coming into a different mm -hmm. town, or is it coming into Cornbrook? Uh, Cornbrook is not on the coast. Cornbrook is just the nearest village. The coast is maybe 30 miles south of where you are. Okay. Um, let's say that it is sometime in the autumn. So it's it's foggy and kind of misty, um, not outright raining. Um, I assume you want your ambush to be at night. Um, I would expect the ambush to be during the day. I, would, I wouldn't expect people to be traveling on the road at night. Is yeah. my, uh, okay. would be my thinking. Um, do I have reason to expect them to travel at night though? Um, yeah, just the, the journey's long enough that, that they'll probably be traveling after dark, all the ways after dark. Do I know what the shipment is? You've got very little information. Uh, like I said, this is a, from a low, low ranking thief that heard of, you know, high value cargo. Transported Some around sort of high value cargo. Okay. Yeah. Do I know? Is it coming in today? Is today the day? Yeah. We'll we'll pick. I mean, we we'll, we can sort of like retroactively do your prep, but I think we'll pick up this pick up the campaign sort sure. of at, after near the ambush. Um. Um. I. I I have a question for you. Yes. Do you, Do you typically work alone, or do you have like a company of of brigands that you? Uh, I think I'm just with? starting out right now. So for for the time being, I work alone. And he'll mm -hmm. probably continue to work alone, um, unless he's got reason to work with other people. But um, mm -hmm. as lazy as Eric can be, he's also kind of a self-sufficient sort of man. You know, mm -hmm. the, if I depend on other people, I'm only going to get let down by other people. I might as well mm -hmm. just let myself down and not do anything. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um... Do I know who the shipment is for? from or to? Um, you're basically operating on secondhand info. Do you have, I mean, if, I'll let you roll relevant knowledge or proficiency checks if you would like to get further information. Does but, it have anything to do with agriculture, gambling, or fire building? Uh, 
No. Okay. I... So you can roll like an int or charisma check at minus five or something if you wanna. Um, sure. Can I get a like a charisma check for um etiquette or something yeah, or uh, um, some sort of? Well, it's gonna say like a local local history. Okay. Is that charisma? Charisma. charisma. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ooh, thirty. Okay. Um, so you got the impression that this was a shipment coming to uh, either the, lo- the local thieves guild that this guy was involved in, or some of their associates. Mm-hmm. So this guy had over this guy. You would, he probably he felt bad after he took all your money gambling and gave you sort of this lead. So he heard some of his higher ups talking about this high value shipment coming in from the south. Okay. Um, not clear whether it's to them or to some of their associates, but um, bound bound eventually to Seagate. To, okay, yeah. How am I identifying this shipment? Like, how do how will I know what who the people are? That's a that's a good question. I mean, all all you really know is is the time, and you're it's supposed to be valuable. So hopefully you'll know it when you see it. Okay. Do I do I know so, anything about like the people that my, how many guards it might have, or if it's being pulled by a cart, or if it's being carried like the size of the shipment? Is it something I can carry under an arm, or do I need a wagon to pull it? Uh, you, your contact didn't know. Uh, would you like if if you want, we can start the campaign like a day prior. No, no, this is fine. Um, with you gathering reconnaissance in the local area and trying to figure out that um, information some other way. Yeah. I would like to spend at least a little time doing some recon. He's a, okay. he's a he's a lazy guy, but he's he'll do his some due diligence and then just kind of half-ass the end of it. Okay. Um. So then we can pick up either in Cornbrook or then the next village up. Yeah. Uh, where? Well, uh, no. Let's pick up in Cornbrook. I I, okay. I want to do the Cornbrooky stuff. All right. Oh, I can control music or something, can't I? Yes, you can. I've been playing some stuff in the background, but your control oh. would be appreciated. Uh, uh, the old jukebox no longer functions. What, oh, but they've got it's so some long since I've DM'd anything. Uh, so how do I get to the to the tabletop audio stuff? It should be under jukebox. Um, then do the ad, and then okay. it just starts on tabletop audio list. Okay. Tabletop audio, cool. Yeah, they've really done a good job um, updating the the sound stuff on Roll Twenty. Mm-hmm. I've made some suggestions that I hope they implement in the future that they haven't yet. God, I've got all these playlists of expired songs. Oh. But there at least go. they now show you when a song is expired. Before it just wouldn't mm-hmm. play. Yeah. All right. So we will pick up uh, late morning uh, in the cornhole, the local watering hole in Cornbrook. Uh, is a small agricultural town, village. Um, small cornhole village. is the tavern there? Cornhole is the tavern there. Nice. Um, there's... It's, Small place. They've got a they've got a general store, um, and an inn above above the cornhole. Um, but otherwise, maybe a couple hundred people live in town, and then maybe several thousand more in the outlying farmlands. Mm-hmm. And as the name would suggest, they mostly grow corn here. Even though that would seem horribly unfit for the climate, but you know, maybe maybe some. These these things are beyond uh, are beyond Eric, but yeah, I mean, perhaps a more intelligent man could piece together some. It's a some fantasy corn that grows in different <laughs> climates. It's perfect. All right, uh, so I guess I'm in the corn hole. Uh, it's been so, so long got, since I've been a player. I don't even know what to do. Yeah, I'm ready to uh, tell you like, what the what like, the bartender's doing, but I have no likewise, idea what to do on my own. Likewise. Well, I'm yeah, my DM style is a little bit different than yours. I tend to be more open to suggestions, yeah. if they're good ones. But, um, <laughs> but uh, damned by faint praise. Yeah, my style's <laughs> a little different. I tend to be open to good suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> 
no, so I, I I'll go ahead and yeah. Oh, so I was gonna say, so you're here. You are in um, in Cornbrook. Mm-hmm. All you really know is that there's a shipment coming in. Uh, probably, let's say t- tomorrow would be the, would be the shipment will be passing through Cornbrook during the day. I was thinking you would hit it at night between this village and the next village over when you're farthest from civilization. Yeah, if I have reason, on the road. if I have reason to suspect they'll be traveling the road at night, and that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, the, the stretch between here and the next village is a little long to make in a day, and mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Um. So I guess my. Uh, I guess I, I wear my clothes. I left my leather armor, my short sword, my shield, and three of my six daggers on Wallace, who I've you know, stabled out front. So I'm going mm-hmm. in just in my uh, former soldiering attire. It's probably a little dirty and maybe a little bit worn. Uh, I bet I I probably look like someone who used to be a soldier and isn't anymore. Um, I think I've got like, you know, the, the hair is getting a little long. I've got the beard going. I'm not keeping myself very clean. My uniform is mismatched. Like I'm only I'm wearing the jacket, but not the right pants. And I've got the boots on, but I don't have my signs or sigils or anything. Yeah, um, yeah. Got- there's, there's, you're, it's probably a familiar sight in these parts in these times. Mm-hmm. Uh, walking in, in the small uh, common room, you see a, a pair of other, what looks like mercenaries. Okay. Probably similar situation to yourself. Yeah. So left behind after the war, not much else to do. Uh, uh, not much left to live for. Selling their, selling their sword for what silver they can get. Um, apart from that, it's mostly farmers, uh, and it's pretty empty at this time of day. Okay. Well, I'll make my way. I'll give a, the other soldiers in the corner a nod of acknowledgement. Not a not a nod down, but a nod up. You know, the mm-hmm. more friendly. What's up? Um, and then head over. They to- turn and glare at you, and then back to their drinks. All right. Yeah. The assholes. I thought we were brothers in arms. Oh. Fine. I have to use competition. Ah, nice. I'm getting down. I, I I head over to the bartender and give him a, a bit of a wave to grab his attention. Yeah, the barkeep is a portly man, balding with a tan vest. Uh, what can I do you for? Hey there, I'm Eric. New in town, uh, not but staying looks, long. Looks you up and down. You, uh, what um, weapons did you have on display? You're, I you're have clearly a, armed and looking for trouble, right? No, I have a single dagger on the left side of my belt. Okay, so your shield, your sword, your my armor. That's all on Wallace. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So you know, armed just enough to defend myself or to do daily tasks. Mm-hmm. Pretty cheap. Okay. Um, uh, my name's Eric. Well, what's your name, buddy? Uh, Tom. Tom? Nice to meet you. Uh, can I get a brew, Tom? Mind if I call you Tommy? I'll call uh, you Tom. Um, That's fine. All right. <clears throat> Ale? Ale's great. A little early for whiskey, huh? And he oh, pours oh. it. Yeah, yeah. Say, uh... Fills you a, fills you a beer from a, from a barrel. Um, but you're free to continue talking to his backside as he, yeah. as he comes up. So, uh, Tom, I'm not looking to stay here in Cornhole very long. I'm liking, looking to get on, move on to Seagate. Uh, they're a... What do you call it? A, a not quite caravans, but you know of any people headed up that way? Are there, like, reg- regular uh, wagons headed up that I can hitch a ride with so I don't have to walk my whole way. All right. About this time, he turns around and plops the tankard on the bar in front of you. Mm-hmm. Caravans up to Seagate. Oh, or, you know, just any sort of yeah. wagon shipment or more likely, you know, a place where I could find a hitch a ride with a wagon headed north. <clears throat> Not much travel north these days What with the roads being as they are. What's wrong with the roads? Well, ain't too safe. Well, mm. Bandit types everywhere. 
Mm. Bandits, other critters. Other you want to get to Seagate's nice and safe. Your your surest route's probably probably by by boat. Won't that mean yeah. heading south? Yeah, the docks just south south of here have been seeing a little more use these days. Nick's caravan probably not leaving for a couple of days. Got to head south to go north. That's a that's a trip. Ain't too far. Right. Day or so on the coast. There's a uh, an old an old uh, an old pier that's been sort of fixed up and uh, good good fella um, by the name of Eustace is sort of running some some boats off that pier. Uh, what, what the hell town is that? No town, just a just a dock. Just a dock south of here. Nods. Oh. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, but if if there were someone coming through town, any idea where I where they might uh, hitch up for the night or where they might leave from? Well, my spot here is pretty much the only only place to be. So. All right. Well, thank you. How, how much do I owe you for the ale? Uh, it'll be five copper. You guys are expensive out here. All right, I shill them out six copper, and tell them to keep the change. Um, all right, I lean against the bar and observe the room. You said there's a group of mercenaries. Did you say three, or am I making that number? Uh, two mercenaries, a pair of men. Um, they both are yeah have some mismatched. Boiled leather and blades at their sides. Okay. Um, anyone else in the place? Yeah, there are a couple of farmers. Uh, a couple, probably a half dozen. In yeah, not all together. Okay. Um, I tell the bartender I'll bring back the mug, and I want to head out into the town and just get a, an idea for the layout. Is it like one road that runs uh, through a, a small village? Yeah, it's one road. Uh, the village is just maybe a dozen or so buildings in the main town. There's a there's a general store and the cornhole in the center of town, uh, blacksmith, a few uh, houses in town, but not many. Like I said, you would guess no more than a couple hundred people live here. Mm -hmm. um, and then beyond fields of corn. Uh, um, hmm. I stand and kind of just take a look at the road. I don't have a weather sense proficiency, but can it, is it looking overcast? Does it look like it's going to rain? Um, it, it's it's dreary, uh, overcast, and a little foggy. Uh, looks like it could rain any moment. But. Hmm. Oh, these things bode well. Eric stands there thinking, what am I going to do with Wallace? Do I take him out and leave him in the woods with me? Do I set up camp? Do I leave him in here in town and just go out by myself? Could be a while waiting for them. Be nice to have like a little camp set up. Then again, if I got to fight them and flee, I don't want to have to pack up camp to run away. Maybe I could set up camp a little bit off the road, and I don't know. Doesn't look like I'll find out much about people coming through here, but if there's no shipment leaving for a few days and the road is ill-traveled, probably whoever comes down that road will be my target. Hmm. I head back in, um, set my drink on the counter, and ask the bartender, uh, how, how far do you say Seagate was by road? Ooh, uh, a week? Uh, oh my god! Any more on foot? Week on foot? That that is longer than I want to walk by myself out in the wilderness. Uh, say, buddy, you got a a, a room for the night here? Uh, sure thing. Um, 
Oh, this is awkward. Three sure, sure. Three silver? Yeah, of course. Um, I dish out three silver to him. Okay. Um, and, you know, just ask to be shown to my room. Uh, yeah, just up the stairs. First door on the right. There is no lock on the door. Okay. Uh, I go up and make a show of going up to the room and checking it out, realizing that I actually didn't want to stay here. I was just looking <laughs> for information, but uh, it's okay. I'll pay my two silver or my three silver. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there is a, a straw bed that does not look particularly comfortable. What time um, of day? Or a small is it? like table. Uh, it is probably just about noon. Okay. And uh, I've got word that they're coming through here today, through this town today. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then the night, tomorrow evening is when I would expect to ambush them on the road. Okay, cool. That's so what you're hoping for. Yeah, then I'll just stay here for the day. Um, yeah, I think that's all the information that I need. So I'll just, mm -hmm. you know, spend the night here and head out uh, on the road um, early the next day. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. Shall we... You want to skip forward to the following morning? Yeah, actually, I need to buy some rations first. Okay. Yeah, there's a general store in town. You can buy your rations there at standard price. What is that, like a gold a day? Um, look that up for you. I don't know. Because you read it all the prices. I did all the prices for my own thing, but I don't remember the normal ones. Let's yeah. find them out. Ten gold a week. That's dry rations. Um, Three gold a week for standard. Okay. Um, Where are you seeing this? Uh, table 44, rations, mm -hmm. comma, standard. Under household provisionings, like six lines below dry rations. Uh, okay. okay, the dry rat wait. Yeah, they do uh, dry they? rations, but then they do rations, comma, standard, and rations, comma, mm -hmm. iron. And so dry are even more expensive than iron. Sure, yeah. whatever. Three gold a week. Or... Of course, there's no no stating how long any of these things last. No. Anywhere in the book. Um, so I'll grab a week's worth of standard rations. Yeah, you can buy those at standard price. Okay, and I just load that shit up onto Wallace. Okay. Um, and it uh, takes 30 silver. Bringing me to 71 silver. I'm getting poor. Okay. Uh, so then I'll head out on the road. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. So you head north of Cornbrook. Uh, the road follows the river intermittently. Mm -hmm. Sometimes veering away. Sometimes coming back. Just a sec. Let's find you a... Nah. Oh, gotta, traveling sounds? Gotta pay for that. Here we go. Okay. So, I want Three. to... I want to leave town and go... Four hours out of town. So I'll just kind of... If I set out in the morning, I'll walk until a little bit afternoon. Okay. Um, and then I'd like to examine the terrain yeah. around me. Yeah. So leaving town, you pass through many a many a farmstead. Mm -hmm. um, you see you some farmers out in their fields. Mm. Uh, corns high and thick. Um, so maybe you don't you don't so much see yeah. You don't see that many people, but you know occasionally you'll see movement in the cornfields or right. catch a glimpse of someone on a porch. Uh, I give them polite waves as I go. Yeah, you get some skeptical, skeptical looks back. A few, few waves, but fair. No. Country folk are off not to interact with strangers. Mm -hmm. um, so I will revise my plan. I want to go four hours out of farmland, not out of the village. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so probably more like five hours outside of town. Sure. That's fine. Um, out here, it's mostly just rolling rolling hills, green. Uh, you would say pasture land, but you don't see many shepherds out and about. Uh, um, are you? What are you looking for? Are you looking for um, a place to set up an ambush? Or? Well, for now, I'm looking for... Yeah, so I'm looking for a place to... Where I might have... Um, an easy line of sight. No, let me rephrase this. Um, let's take a look at the map for a moment here. Um, if I, if the road is coming like this, mm -hmm. I would like a place that off to one side or the other is some sort of um, cover, at least, at least like um, 300 feet away. I want some cover sure. well off the road where I could maybe, like, make a little camp with Wallace mm -hmm. um, and then have line of sight down the road so that I can see when people might be coming and make it to the road ahead of them. Yeah, there are certainly occasional hills and shrubberies, so you can find something like that. Are you looking for a spot away from the river? So there are points where the where the road runs along the river. There are points where it veers away for a small stretch. Um. What side of the road is the river on? The, do you have a direction? Eh, you know the land well enough. Uh, the the river or the road is on the east bank of the river, at least at this point. Okay. The road is on the east bank of the river. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't swim, so I'm gonna stay away from the river. Well, oh, hold okay. on. Let's let's talk about the river. Is it wide? Is it narrow? Is it fast? Uh, is it deep? It's wide and slow, and you don't know how deep. Well, I want to... At least wide as far as... It's probably the only river you've ever known, so I don't know what we're referencing it off of, but... It's true. All right, well, I'll go, you know, tie walls up to a rock or something. Mm -hmm. Take off my boots. Take the daggers out of my boots. Mm -hmm. uh, put all those things on the shore. Roll up my pants and kind of start walking carefully out into the river. I don't want to get past my shin, though. You never know. Okay. A quick current can sweep you off your feet and drown you. Okay. Um, you wade maybe 15 feet out up to your shins. Um, there still looks like there's an awful lot of river to go, and it's getting deeper. Um, but not a very not very swiftly moving. Okay. But uh, from where I stand, does it look like it would come up to my waist at least? Uh, well, yeah, well above. You think it'd go overhead in the middle. All right, this river will not do. I, I back on out, mm -hmm. put my boots and stuff on Wallace to, you know, Wallace to let my feet dry, cross the road, and go on the other side looking for some sort of... I'd really like a, a bush or a collection of bushes or a grove of trees. I want something that I could, like, make a, set up a tent and things behind mm -hmm. that you couldn't see from the south side of the road. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so you, you walk maybe another half hour north of where you were. Yeah, you put your shoes back on and continue north. Um, and you do see a large, uh, so the, the road veers away from the river and to go around a copse of trees. It's a small, small forest, maybe a couple of acres of wood. Uh, and that puts the trees between the river and the road? Yes. Okay. So then there's like a grove, like towards the top of the map that I'm drawing. Mm hmm. Something like that. Yeah, I'll redraw it once you like settle on a spot. Cool. But yeah, not even close to scale, but sure, more or less. All right, All right cool. So I'm going to go up in there and um, I'm going to make a little camp. I'm going to. Okay. Do you care what's on the other side of the road? You know, I probably should, but Eric doesn't. He's okay. got a plan, and all the other details, you know. He, he's a serial underachiever. I should care. I really should. All right. Let's get you. Um, you have no useful skills, correct? I have agriculture and fire building. Oh. And gambling. You have agriculture. Roll me an agriculture check. Ooh. I want to get to the bottom of this corn. 
Um, D20 plus That's 9. Right. I'm not very good at agriculture. Yeah. But I know so my would, corn. Yeah, so you'd know that corn typically couldn't grow in this climate, but um, some hundreds of years ago, a an inventive... Uh, um, it's not in some some local legends, maybe a wizard and some just a, just a local wise man is this, developed this special breed of corn that can grow here in the... Is this in it. MMO corn? Magically modified organisms? <clears throat> is it safe to eat? Is the corn labeled MMO? If not, I'm not going to eat anything in this town. You don't corn know what those wizards labeled, put in the corn, man. You're We've only been eating it for to, like 50 years. Well, it could be dangerous. Parts, they use the corn for everything. In fact, you are... Oh. Am I feeding Wallace delicious. the corn? Oh god, <laughs> Wallace, you're going to get cancer? That, they that beer that you drank yesterday it was probably brewed with corn. Oh god. And bread in your ration, that ain't no wheat bread. Oh, it's cornbread? Well, I want to. I'm going to go up to the local lord and demand that he insists that all MMOs are labeled. But that's for another adventure. Right now, we got to you know, ambush some people on the road. Yeah. Oh, no. What have I done? Oh. No, what have you done? My line drawing is not up to snuff, but I'm trying to get you a road and things. It's also not visible. Can't see anything. Yeah, I deleted it because it wasn't, wasn't proper. Give me a second. And uh, roll a perception check. Boom! 25. Eric yeah. sees whatever's around him. Yeah, so <laughs> as you're, sort of, you're setting up camp, um, how far off the road do you want to be? I would like my camp to be like... 300 feet or so off the road. Okay, so we're gonna go... 100 yards or so. Way lower scale. Okay, um, so you're sort of set, setting up camp. You've, like, taken off Wallace's whatever. Um, you're taking off his, his saddlebags. Tying, you're tying him up to a tree, unloading the saddlebags, and you, um, you're setting your saddlebags, and you catch what looks to be, like, a, a small footprint. Um, and it's, it's clearly, you know... A lot of a lot of commotion around, and you look up, and there's a lot of there's a lot of scuff marks in the dirt, and you're pretty confident that you know some some other something has has been through this through this wood. I don't know if that's of interest uh, to you or if. And, and a little bit. How big is this wood? Are we talking like a small grove, sixty feet across? Or are we talking like this is a, a forest? Um, a couple of acres. So a lot of wood. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I figure I got some time. Um, I'm gonna unload Wallace. Um, use some of the long rope I have to give him a long leash so he can walk around and graze and doesn't have to stay right next to a tree. Mm -hmm. um, set up my small tent. Put my winter blanket in there. Um, I guess I don't have a bedroll. I thought I grabbed a bedroll, but I think I just have a blanket. Um... Uh, you know, bring out the cooking pot, build some, like, build a where I will create a fire, grab some stones, make a little fire pit. I've got, I carry with me um, sticks to set up my cooking pot, some nice, like, uh, Y-shaped sticks with another one that runs in between them. Mm -hmm. So, I, you, so know, you I, get your camp set up in this little... Yeah, I get my camp set up, and I, I take my cooking pot down to the river, fill it with water, and bring it back. Don't know what I'm going to use it for, but I might need a cooking pot with some water in it. Yeah, what are the dimensions of an acre? Well, how many feet to a side? That's a good question. An acre is... A standard shape, 660 by 66. God, that's, I should just I should just use standard measurements, but damn uh, it. 70 feet on a... 70 yards on a side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you're, you're a couple hundred feet from the road... Another maybe 500 plus feet of forest from where you are to the river. Okay. Um, are we at the, the north end of this map? Yeah, I'm about to draw some trees. Uh, it's not, I'll get the scale okay. right in just a second. But... Okay.
So there's sort of your uh does it So we're gonna fill in shapes, why don't we Yeah. That's not what I meant to do, but yeah, that's it's your tree line. How do you change the scale in Roll20? Um, it's the drop down at the very top where you select which thing you want to go to. You drop the thing down and there's like a gear icon or there's some yeah. way to modify each individual page and on there they've got the scale. I don't know if that was an accurate description or not. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. Page settings. Yeah, let's do one unit. I think. Try 50 foot squares. Seems about right. So that's that little blob, green blob there is the tree line. Perfect. Ooh, all right, so this. All right, so I would want to set up my camp somewhere where I could look down towards the road and have a clear line of sight to the road. That makes sense. Um, the tree is all pretty flat, or the, the, the forest is all pretty fat, okay. flat, and I'm drawing in some like hilly terrain. Nice. Um, so I don't know if you want to put where, I can give you an icon or something. I don't know if you want to point out where you, where you're setting up your camp. Um, see, I want to set my camp up little bit away from the road. Do you want to pick a, a little icon guy, or should I? Oh, uh, you can you can assign me a little icon guy. This little fire. Uh, do you yes. want to ping where you want your fire? Where you want your camp? Um, I want my camp right around here-ish. Okay. Somewhere around here, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, um and then... Yes. All alone on the road. Calm day in the countryside. Okay. So I'll set up this camp, get, you know, get everything all going. Hopefully, well, I would like to set up my actual fire pit um, in a spot where there would be like a bush or a tree or something between it and the road so that if I have like a small fire going, the um, it wouldn't be like a bright beacon of light. There might be ambient light in the woods, but it wouldn't be like, oh, there's clearly a fire right there. You know what I mean? Um, if that's possible. It's a pretty loose, um, I mean, what do you, open forest. Like forest the trees aren't too, too close together. Uh, you suspect that anyone walking by would be able to see smoke rising from the road, at least during the day. Yeah, I'm more concerned. Uh, right about now, it's the the cloud cover has dissipated a little bit in the heat of the day and you can't actually see some sun. It's still cool. Um, uh, I'm a little more chilly. concerned about nighttime because I'm going to be camping here at night and I wanna, I'm going to want to sit next to a fire for warmth but I'm also going to want to mm -hmm. be able to try and block the fire from the south side of the road and I don't know if that's a possibility. I might be that might be a pipe dream. Um, but if I can, I'll like drag over some logs and some fallen branches or whatever to make like a small, a small barricade slash stack of firewood. Okay. I've got the afternoon. Okay, so you collect some wood? Yeah, collect some wood and some branches and try and just create a barrier on the south side of my fire. Um, okay. What's, what is the goal of this barrier? The goal is so that at night, if I have a fire going, that it wouldn't be super obvious to someone coming from the south side, or right? like they okay. at least the light, um, the smoke may still be visible. But you would guess that after dark, the smoke will probably blend in, especially if it gets foggy again. Yeah, I figure when it's dark, the smoke time. wouldn't be seen. Yeah, as it starts getting towards evening time, um, the fog fog bank rolls in from the from the river. 
Um, I want to take a, a look around before I lose all the daylight to see what the scuffle was about. Now that I've got like Wallace tied up in my little camp set up, I want to see if I can... I don't know, I'll just walk around the forest for half an hour, look into if I can see anything. I'll be wearing my armor and weapons, though. Uh, what is, what does your dude look like? Um, greased, ba greased back, black hair, 5'5", 155 pounds, 33 Damn. years old, leather armor, short sword at his side, no shield while he's walking around this forest. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, I'm just trying to find an appropriate token that is free. <laughs> oh, okay. Whoa. <laughs> you can continue describing any preparations you may want to make. Um, I just want to search the forest to see if there is a, um, uh, see what this scuffle you were talking about earlier was. If it, was it like an animal scuffle, or is there someone walking around my section of woods? Yeah, roll me a wisdom check at minus five. Oh, God. Eleven. Um, you're not sure. You saw what looked like a, a small footprint. Um, but now that you're looking around, I don't know. It looks like there was some there was some movement in this area. The the place he selected as a camp seemed like something else had had, had used at some point. Okay. There was an animal or a human or a man or. I'll, I'll give a shout out. Hello, here. anyone here? Hello. Got some food to share. Pulling out the dice. God, we're all gonna die. Eric is so young. There's no He's response. He's only an hour old. There's no response. Uh, the sun is just setting. You can see the filtered light through the trees over the water. Well then, I'm gonna go make my little, go back to my camp, um, eat my food, my standard rations. I got a cooking pot. So if uh, any of that stuff can be cooked to improve this flavor, I will do so. I'll get myself like a little stump to sit on this so I can lean back past my firewall and take, keep an eye on the road. Um, got my little tent set up and- uh, Here we go. How's that guy? Oh yeah. Um, Beautiful. Token, how do I give to player? Um, represents character or assign control? Presents character. Got Jeannie, Michelle, and Qual. I need to make you a character, don't I? Uh, yeah. Or I'm you gonna could... give it to Jeannie, and can you change Jeannie's oh, name? I, oh, yeah, I'm good. I can do this. Um, I don't have access to a Jeannie character sheet. This is weird. Well, we'll figure it out later. Yeah. Name is... Uh, Eric. Eric. CK? CK. That changes anything. <laughs> All right. All right. So as the sun is setting, where where do we find Eric? Oh, uh, we find Eric kind of like this, the facing the fire, rolling in, uh, leaning back every minute or so to peer down the road, see if anyone's coming. Um, with my armor on still, uh, and I want to. I want to see what the road, what the the path from me directly to the road is like, where it's still that wooded area. This is all. Um, what am I trying to say here? Is it um? Are there any impediments? Is there any change in the terrain, or is it just kind of like flat and lightly wooded? From I mean, I've sort of indicated where there's hills. Where right. where are you asking? Oh, uh, just right here. So if there's no hills in this section. Yeah, there's trees. It's mostly flat from there to the road. That is perfect. Um. Cool. Well, I don't have any torches, so I just get my little fire going. I keep my water pot. Um, near the fire, but not over the fire right now. I might use it to dump out on the fire if I need to. Uh, and then I'm just going to chill. I'm just going to chill and 
you know, hang out, whistle to myself. I don't have anything super interesting going on. I've got a lantern and some oil, but I don't think I need to use that right now. Um, I'll refill my water skins as needed and, and keep my shield nearby so I can strap it on my arm and just kind of keep looking down the road every so often and see if I can see anyone coming my way. Yeah. Hell, maybe I'll even kind of reposition myself uh, so that I'm looking down the road and the fire is on my side. Uh, right, are you next to the fire? Or? Yeah, I want to be just far enough away from the fire that I'm to the side of my firewall, but, you know, as close to the fire for warmth as possible. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, give me just a second. Um, still getting the hang of the DM side of things. No, that is not the song that I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, right. um, All right. So the sun is set. The last remnants of pink are leaving the sky. As clouds roll in overhead, concealing the moonlight. Um, roll two perception checks for me. Thirty-one and twenty. Okay. Um, average of 25 and a half. Yeah. So just as just as the last uh, glimmers of light have uh, disappeared beneath the, the horizon, um, you think you hear something and then you sort of snap your head snaps in the direction of the movement or of the sound and you think you spot some movement off in the brush. Um, not down the road, in the brush around me. In the brush around you. Ooh. Uh, I... Does it sound like a small animal, like a rabbit, or does it sound like... Um, a, a large animal, so maybe a small deer or something about that size. Okay, I grab my uh, yeah, sword. 31. Yeah, so you, you go to your sword, and you think you can... I mean, you, you see similar movement off to your other side. Two such things, velociraptors. <laughs> <laughs> Ned starts to grab his shield. Uh, Eric starts to grab his shield. He often thinks of himself like his father and uh, starts tying it to his arm uh, and gets mm -hmm. kind of in a low defensive stance. He's been a soldier for a long time. He's prepared for combat, need it come. Mm -hmm. You stand your ground. I stand my ground while I don my shield, keeping my back to the fire, uh, glancing around. Um, you do see continued movement that sort of like, pass, it seems like it passes over and through your camp. It's, you'd guess maybe, maybe at, or like around your camp, like maybe you'd guess from the sound of the rustling um, that you've sort of stilled yourself and you listen, you'd guess maybe a half dozen um, of these small animals. Um, uh, you can't see much movement. Your firelight only extends maybe 60 feet and trees obscure, so you don't really catch a glimpse of anything. And then after two... I switched or so, my dagger, by the way. Switched I, your dagger? Okay, yeah. sure. After two or three minutes, uh, the movement subsides. It seems like whatever it was sort of passed, passed around your camp. And yeah, the bartender talked about sign. monsters in this area, and Eric wasn't paying attention. He should have asked what sort of monsters inhabit this area. Um, could you're be, be kobolds, small creatures, woods, maybe not. Maybe got maybe brownies. No, what could be out here? Eric calls Brownie. out. Um, do you have you can roll a 
charisma check at minus five. 23. Okay. I mean, you've certainly he- heard stories of, of fey folk in this land, brownies and more sinister fairies. Uh, you you wouldn't be familiar with kobolds or anything like that, but uh, yeah. Brownies could, could have certainly been known to live in woods and hills. I switch the grip of my dagger to a throwing position um, and call out, Hello? Um, and uh, you want to take a break here? Yeah. Yeah. As you shout hello and wait for a response, uh, you're uh, greeted with a, with a distant whistling. <laughs> 